Welcome back everyone, it's Abdali here with even more coverage from the PAX Pokemon League from PAX South 2015. If you guys have not seen the previous episodes, go check them out. The playlist is in the description. You can find out how I've earned all eight badges. Now, it's time to fight the Elite Four because we've got eight badges and it's going to be awesome. These guys have been waiting to fight these guys because once we beat the Elite Four, then we've got a shot at the champ. And if you guys are unfamiliar with what PAX Pokemon League is, the link to the site is in the description, and ultimately, it's a place where you can go and fight some trainers in real life with your own team, earn their badges, and make your way to the top, if you're good enough. So, here we go. Now, this is good. This is good. We've got a battle against Odell. Now, he is an all-fire type Pokemon trainer. Now, that's very tough. Whenever you have an all-fire type team, it's a little tougher because, for one, um, Stealth Rock is your weakest enemy. Oh my god, all your Pokemon are going to take at least 25% damage. Um, unless you choose, like, some other different Pokemon. Uh, Fire Fighting? Yeah, yeah, Fire Fighting won't take that. Anyway, so Stealth Rock is going to be key to victory over here. This is a battle against the Elite Four member, Del, the Hot Freestyler. Now, he's a very cool guy. I mean, just, like, personality-wise, like, upon meeting him, very awesome dude. So I'm glad I met this guy. All right, so here is his bio straight from the site. A Houston native who settled down in Johto, Odell Dizzy Dell Harmon has traveled the world searching for Pokemon that share his passion for battles and family. One fateful day after moving to Johto, he received a baby Cyndaquil, and the flames on its back sparked a fascination with fire types and hip-hop music. Dell became an urban recording artist and battler, specializing in fire types that spit that hot fire just like he does when recording a new song or having a freestyle battle. Del often gives away free tickets to anyone who can beat him in a battle. And after 10 different gym leaders failed to win free tickets to his sold-out show in Houston, he was approached by the PAX Pokemon League to battle as one of the Elite Four at South 15. It's going to take a strong bond with your Pokemon and much more than water to stand the heat and earn a Spitfire Emblem. Okay, so these are not badges anymore. These are emblems. So this is high stakes. So, I'm using my team that I brought from the very beginning. You guys recognize it. I've got Landorus, Conkeldur Assault Vest. Um, I've got my Klefki that does dual screens. I got my Mega Manectric. Um, I've got the Choice Banded um, Dragonite as my Panic card. Um, and I brought my Vaporeon as well. So, I'm hoping that Vaporeon will be able to do some work. I love Vaporeon, that's my favorite Pokemon. And at the same time, I got my Landorus that can easily come in, set up Stealth Rocks, and give me the advantage throughout the entire map. Looking at his team, he does not have any um, Rapid Spinners, or I don't know if any of those Pokemon carry Defog, uh, but that would be ideal. If you're going to run an all-fire team, you need Defog or Rapid Spin just to get rid of the rocks. So right off the bat, I'm going to lead off with Landorus. Um, looking at his Pokemon, three of his Pokemon take 50% health after Stealth Rock, so that's going to be key to victory. I need to keep that in mind. You've got the Talon Flame that takes 50% off. Volcarona and Charizard will take 50% off. Oh my god, that's so key to this battle. You've got a couple Pokemon that can set up the Sun, which is Drought Ninetales and potentially the Mega Charizard Y. Um, you've got the very fast Pokemon um, Extreme Speed on Arcanine, possibly. And you've got a Fake Out um, and U Turn combo, possibly with the Infernape. So let's see how this plays out, shall we? This is going to be very interesting. It's going to be heated up, let me tell you. So, um, I'm going to lead off with Landorus. I need to get the Stealth Rocks up, turn one. I don't even care what happens. So with that, he brings in his Infernape. I'm already at the advantage because Infernapes are most likely the physical variant. Since I have Intimidate, I'm at the advantage. He goes for Taunt, totally seeing that I'm going to try to set up Stealth Rocks. So unfortunately, I don't see him, I don't ever see like Infernape carrying Taunt. So he ultimately gets his own Stealth Rock set up, uh, which is good. Um, so I'm going to go for U-Turn, considering the fact that this guy can possibly be Focus Sashed. I'm going to U-Turn out to break his Focus Sash and then move on to another Pokemon. I'm thinking Vaporeon or Conkeldur or any of these Pokemon can do well. I'm hoping that he'll hit me with a Fire-type move so that I can get my Guts boost and then just plow through his team. So he's going to go for Flare Blitz right over here while I go for Drain Punch. I know I can take one move from this guy. He gets a critical hit! Oh my god, that did so much damage. So luckily for me, I'm able to get up the uh, the Drain Punch, knock him completely out, get a little bit more of my health back, and go from there. The critical hit mattered so much that time. I'm like, great, now my Conkle there is kind of neutered. I don't know how the heck I'm going to win this one. 
So here we go, uh, Ninetales comes in. I see a lot of Ninetales with the move Extra Sensory. Um, it looks like he's floating on an, an, on the air with a, um, a balloon. So I go for the Mach Punch because I'm expecting the Extra Sensory, but it goes for the Fire Blast instead. Now I'm fully specially defensive, and I don't know how I survived that, but that was crazy. Had I known I was going to survive that attack, I should have gone for the um, going for the drain punch. But anyway, hindsight's always 2020. He's going to go for the solar beam, possibly expecting me to switch, which is a very good play, considering the fact that if I did switch, expecting a fire blast into Vaporeon, I would have gotten owned. So good thing I didn't. Here comes Landorus right over here. The intimidate really doesn't matter, but now that I pop the air balloon. I can go through, I can set up my rocks, I can take a hit or two, and then continue to proceed with Earthquake. Not good for me that he's got Will-O-Wisp on this guy. I'm pretty upset. I was hoping for the Will-O-Wisp on the Conk Elder, but I got owned instead. So luckily for me, it doesn't really matter because for one, a burnt Landorus can still intimidate and he got the rocks up for me. So this Landorus is fairly bulky. He's able to survive a sun boosted stab fire blast off of this Ninetales. Go for the U-turn. I'm going to preserve him for later in case Arcanine wants to come in and I can intimidate him. So I'm going to go for Mega Manectric right here. I'm figuring, you know what, I need an opportunity to Mega Evolve so I get that Intimidate off. Um, my core over here is Mega Manectric and Landorus so I can Volt Switch and then switch into Landorus and get another Intimidate off. That's my main strategy here and I need that. So I'm going to go right off the bat for a Thunderbolt. Um, now this is based off of regular Manectric stats. I know that Ninetales is pretty bulky, but it was able to knock it out, thank goodness for me. So now that my stats are full right off the bat, I can easily Volt Switch into anyone. I can, um, I can do anything I want. Ultimately over here, I'm going to aim for the Thunderbolt. I'm hoping it'll kill from half health, and it does not. This thing is bulky. Goes for the Quiver Dance, now it's faster than me and it's going to be able to outspeed me and hit me with a fire type attack, which is not good. I don't have too many Pokemon that's going to be able to take a fire type attack, minus my Vaporeon. I don't know what else this guy wants to do. He's plus one in special attack. I survived with five HP. Go for the Thunderbolt, knock this guy out. So luckily for me, I was just enough specially bulky. I don't know if that was a minimum damage roll or a max damage roll. Um, but either way, right now, um, he's got Stealth Rock up, so I don't really want to switch my guy out because it'll die to Stealth Rock upon coming in. And at the same time, I wasn't um, knowledgeable as in if I switch him out right now and then bring him in, will he get the Intimidate off before the Stealth Rock comes or what? I, I don't know, so I left him in to die. In case that is the case, I want you guys to let me know. Uh, let me know in the comment section. So here we go. Um, this is why I kept Landorus, is because I wanted to make sure that this Arcanine got Intimidated off. So, got the Intimidate, he's going to go for the Extreme Speed, it doesn't matter to me, because I got one Intimidate off, I can bring in my Vaporeon, and do some damage with Scald, um, I can do some damage with, um, I don't know, pretty much anything. Scald will destroy this Arcanine. Um, so here we go, but before I do that, I'm going to go into Klefki, um, trying to pretty much set up over here. He's at minus one attack, and I'm, I know he's going to go for a fire move like Flare Blitz, so I went, went for the Reflect. Um, I know I'm going to be taking a lot of damage from this, but at the same time, I want to be able to set up my team for success for the oncoming turns. So I have Light Clee, I've got eight turns of uh, Reflect and Light Screen that I can pretty much use in order to do so. Now keep in mind, my Vaporeon is not all offensive. It's a Wish passing substitute scald um, variant that I pretty much use in order to give Klefki health back. Because usually what I do is I, I go through with Klefki, set up the screens, take a couple hits, and uh, I would wish pass right back to Klefki in order to get the screens right back up. So I'm thinking, all right, well, you know what? I'm just going to sacrifice Klefki right here because I don't necessarily need um, I don't need him because this is pretty much end game. I have the Stealth Rocks up, so once Talonflame and once Charizard come in, they're going to be very easy um, against my Banded Dragonite with extreme speed. So right now my, my screens are ticking down, as you can see over here, and at the same time I've got Vaporeon on the wings. So I'm thinking, all right, well, what I need to do here is I need to either kill this thing off or use him as setup fodder. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, all right, well, he's got Stealth Rock on my side. Whenever there's Stealth Rock on your side and you have a Dragonite on your team, that's bad news, simply because you need the Stealth Rock gone because you need multi-scale. 
He surprised me with a wild charge, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't think that I can substitute up and, um, you know, take, take a hit with the substitute. So, I'm just gonna go for the wish, and I'm gonna baton pass that wish over to my, um, Dragonite, so that I can get that health right back up to full, which is what I need, because I don't have a rapid spinner on this team. Uh, in hindsight, I should have brought someone. But that's okay. Every team has its weakness. So here we go. Um, he's going to keep on going for extreme speed. Now, keep in mind, it is minus one, so it's not going to do anything. I'm going to go for the baton pass, which is awesome. So now I'm going to be able to get that Dragonite right back up to full, ignoring the stealth rock damage, ignoring the multi-skill breakage, which was an awesome play on my part, because I need him at as much health as I can in order for him to power through the rest of his team. Now this is checkmate simply because I know for a fact that my extreme speed, choice banded mind you, will be able to outspeed his, knock him out from that amount of health, and that's pretty much the game. Simply because when Talonflame comes in, that's going to be 50% off, I'll be able to knock that thing out. When Charizard comes in, that's 50% off, I can pretty much knock that whole thing out. So here we go, he's going to Mega Evolve into Charizard Y, it's not really going to do anything for him simply because I've got that banded extreme speed and it's going to be excellent. So that's my win card right here. Full health, nothing can outspeed me unless it has its own extreme speed and it's faster. Um, so right here, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm like, come on, I need this. I need this to kill from 50%. Bam, do so, yes. So good, okay, so my plan is working out. Um, reflect war off, it doesn't even matter. If this thing goes for a choice banded Brave Bird, it doesn't matter because I'm going extreme speed and that's plus two priority. So here we go, banded extreme speed on the Talon Flame, knocking it clean out. It came in and did nothing. So that was it. Odell, very good game. Um, I didn't have too many Pokemon left, um, but I knew that for a fact. Once I got that Stealth Rock up and you got three Pokemon that are quad weak against it, it was going to seal the victory. So very awesome. That was uh, the battle that I've had against the very first PAX Pokemon League gym, uh, Elite Four gym leader. His name is Dell or Odell, um, and I got the awesome dun, 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 Spitfire emblem. Na 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 na. As you can see it right over here, kind of cool. PAX Pokemon League 15. Got some music notes on there. Very nice. So yes, earned it right here, baby. So one out of four Elite Four members down. This is getting excited because now it's high stakes. You risk it all or you lose it. Done. I don't know what's going to happen, but I want you guys to stay tuned for the next episode. It's going to be very exciting. So thank you guys for watching this episode. If you guys would like more PAX Pokemon, definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when a new upload comes out. And if you guys have more time, definitely check out PAX East playlist right on the screen here and uh, the PAX Prime playlist, which is in, also in the description. Speaking of description, right over here is my Twitter. Yeah, at Abdolination. If you guys want to tweet at me, feel free to do so. But other than that, let me know what you guys enjoyed about the episode in the comment section below. I'll talk to you guys in the next one where we will have a very, very exciting second Elite Four round battle. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye, guys.